Hi everyone, happy Victober to you. And it is a Victober miracle because my husband David has finally agreed to be in a video. So at the time that we are filming this, he is less than a week into being Dr. How, which is very exciting. And um, I thought it would be a fun thing for a Victober video to kind of see how much you know about different Victorian novels. Try to give a synopsis of the different ones. See how much you've been paying attention to what I've been saying about them. Um, and I will say, just spoiler warning for these, I don't know how much she's going to know about them, but just in case, if it's one that you do not want to be spoiled about, I will have the picture up the entire time he and I are talking about it. And you can just mute it in that time um, before we move on to the next book. So are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. The first one is Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. Okay. I actually know this one. Uh, this is about three men in a boat. Nah, there's more. Uh, so we listened to part of the audiobook for mm -hmm. it. And there's, there are three guys. They're bachelors. They live in London. Mm -hmm. A couple of them. One of them works at a bank, but the other two pretty much just hang out and do nothing. And yes. they decide to go on a, a weekend trip, I mm -hmm. think. I'm not sure uh, if it's a weekend, but... Or they go on some kind of extended camping trip. Yeah, boat trip. In a boat. Yeah. Uh, rowing up the river. Mm -hmm. And it's about... It's essentially, I think, a comedy of errors. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the first comic novels. Um, yeah, so you enjoyed what you heard of it, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, there's this tendency to nitpick, I think, older versions of literature that you like. So I really like that kind of comedy of errors thing, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of style. But I think this is like a really early version of that. Right. And I think it's sort of tired. Like the, like the jokes and the devices. You know, what's are a funny to me clunky. is like, I think it's funnier than PG Woodhouse. Okay. I think yeah. it's like a less developed. You're like PG a PG Woodhouse. Woodhouse yeah. lo you're yeah. loyal to the core. And I, this was written before, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. comes before PG Woodhouse. Yes. So um, yeah, it's fun though. Yeah. Okay. Next is a Welsh witch by Alan Rain. And you, do you remember me talking about this at all? No, I don't even remember you mentioning it. So, <laughs> Okay. Um, I was going to say, I remember there was one time I asked you to do an errand with Just Peter and leave me at home alone so I could finish. But it was actually Sylvia's Lovers that I okay. did that with. Okay. But not a Welsh witch. Well, what country do you think it's set in? Uh, I'm going to take a guess that it's in Wales. <laughs> that is correct. Right. So you knew it was in Wales. Um, yeah, so um, I, I talk about these books in other videos, but I thought for this video, I would let him try to give the synopsis, so I won't give the rundown. All right, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Yes, I have never seen Wuthering Heights, nor have I read it, mm -hmm. nor have I listened to an audiobook. Yes. But I have heard the song by Kate Bush. Yes. So it's about Heathcliff, and uh -huh. it's about Kathy. <laughs> And their dysfunctional relationship, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's on the moors of England. Yes, yes. Now, um, for those of you that have not seen Kate Bush's Wuthering Heights, you are in for a treat. It is so unique, and we love it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's yeah, it's just an odd, odd kind of song. There are actually two two songs: one where she's in a red dress, and one where she's in a white dress. And I like the red dress one more, and you like the white dress one more. I don't really, I don't really remember. You don't remember? What I like okay. about the song are the key changes in it mm -hmm. are, they do the job of, I would say, emotional transition mm -hmm. really, really well. Yes. And, and just, those are the parts of the song. It's like, I think that the song almost exists for those key changes to happen. Yes. And now I am curious, no, the Pat Benatar one, which was like a hit in the 80s in the okay. U.S., it's not nearly as good. It's, it's not. It's I think not. Kate Bush's is the original. Yeah. I th well, I, I couldn't tell you that. I haven't right. looked into it, but I like hers better. Yes. Okay. Um, the Christmas Hirelings by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. And do you remember me talking about this mm -hmm. one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a film adaptation? There's not. But There's it not. just screams that it needs to be. It made seems into a film. like it's one of these like heartwarming stories. Very you know? much so. Um, when I said that, it kind of sounded. Pejorative. <laughs> it's one of those well, no, you don't stories. mean it. You don't mean it as um, an insult, necessarily, or do you? <laughs> well, you don't like super depressing things. No, no. But you think it. You think it sounds saccharine, just from the title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I think it borders on it, but it's not too much. From what I understand, from what I remember, and I don't remember if I got this from you talking about it or, mm-hmm. or what, there are some young kids, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about them, but they get hired to keep this old lonely guy, this old mm-hmm. man company. Yes. During Christmas. Yes. And then they have some kind of like, you know, I, they probably don't have an adventure, but that I'm, I'm guessing that they misunderstand each other at first. And then they have some fights, and then slowly it starts to transition no. into something like understanding. No. And at the end, no, no, okay. no. <laughs> no. Um, but they they have some little adventures at the house. It's it. I think it should be as well known as a Christmas Carol. Really. Really. Okay. Big words. I know. All right, The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins. Hmm. Do you remember me reading this? No. I remember that Wilkie Collins exists. Okay. And is Wilkie Collins, you don't know any of their other books, except I just mentioned briefly. You, you mentioned earlier. What was it? Woman in White. Yes. Which and do you I've know seen, the other one? Which I've seen. You've the seen some of, test. yes. Uh, yeah. So do you remember the other one? No. The Moonstone. Oh. Okay. So you know nothing about The Law and the Lady. Nothing. Okay. I consumed it, like consumed it over three days. I could not stop reading it. So maybe that was part of it, is that mm. I was just so immersed in it with any and absolutely all free time that I had. That I read it in December, too. Okay, Lorna Dune by R.D. Blackmore. Do you remember me talking about this? No, I recognize the name, so that right. like it's not the first the cookies, time that I've heard the The name. cookies are famous. Cookies? Lorna Dune cookies. What is that? They're shortbread cookies. Okay. You've seen them in the grocery store. Which I don't know how the cookies came My, my came powers of observation are, are not that good. Okay. So you just know nothing about Lorna Doom. Nothing. Okay. Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. Do you yes. remember me reading this? Yeah, I remember you. And, and I watched at least one episode of the mm-hmm. miniseries. You so did. So this is, uh, there's class conflict. Not right. conflict. There's... Struggle. S- struggle. That makes it sound like there's a revolution. I just mean that there's a lot of class... Classism. There we go. Okay. So you have, uh, there's some aristocrat type people and they drink too much. And then there's some other aristocrat people who don't drink too much. And the son of that family is in love with Dr. Thorne's daughter. Right. Or so it seems. Maybe it's not really his daughter. Maybe she's like, I think she might be illegitimate. Right. And then it turns out, this is a spoiler. It turns out, I think that, um, Dr. Thorne's illegitimate daughter is actually heiress to the fortune of the um, alcoholic aristocrats. Yes, the Scatchers. They sadly die of alcoholism right. related diseases. And then she inherits a pile of money and then she yes. gets to marry the guy who's upper class and it's yes. happy. The only I thing think. is, she's not Dr. Thorne's daughter. She's his niece. Oh, his niece. Okay. Yes. Hey, Deerbrook by Harriet Martineau. Do you remember me talking about this at all? Yeah, I remember the name. Um, but no, I don't know anything about it. I don't even know like what country it's set in, Okay. what happens. I mean, you can cut it. Most Victorian novels. I mean, where do you think it's set? Well, probably England. Yes. Yeah. set in England. Okay. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Yeah. Yeah. I've read this. So this is, this is the one I think in this bunch that you've read. Right. Right. And what's the quick breakdown of Great Expectations? Orphan Boy meets Outlaw... Uh, helps him get away, I think, under duress, Mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, The outlaw says, I'm going to make a gentleman out of you. Uh, And then, right, and then... I think he says, like, I'll pay you back someday. No, he said, I'll make a gentleman out of you. Really? I think so, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, it's long. Are you sure you want me to summarize? Just do a quick breakdown. Okay, so um, a few years later, the the orphan, whose name is Pip, Mm -hmm. starts receiving money. Uh, Mm -hmm. from like via a lawyer, the lawyer says, Oh, you have a mysterious benefactor and Pip looks around in his social circles and he decides that it has to be this crazy old lady, Miss Havisham, because she's, she's the only rich person that talks to me. And Miss Havisham has, um, like a goddaughter, daughter or something like that named Mm -hmm. Estella that she's raising. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of like raising her, but she's also like mentoring Pip. And Pip assumes he falls in love with Estella. He thinks that they're going to grow up and get married. Yes. And he takes his, his mysterious money and goes off and hangs out in London and is a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
it turns out that the benefactor was the outlaw. It wasn't Miss mm-hmm. Havisham. And Miss Havisham is, is actually just sort of coiling them all up in a web of lies and wants them to suffer. Um, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Next. This is a very famous Victorian novel. So Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. So the uh, the only thing that I remember about Tess of the D'Urbervilles... Durbervil- You've heard me talk about it? Is that I've how you know I've heard you talk about it. Mm-hmm. Is that Tess is generally doesn't really have a good time in this book. <laughs> that is very accurate. Okay. Yes. Not good times for Tess in this no, book. No, no. Yeah. And I think this is a book you should never read. It would just ruin your life while okay. you were reading it. Okay. All right, Middle March by George Eliot. Mm. Do you remember me talking about this one? Was Room with a View also by George Eliot? No, Room with a View is Ian Forster. Ian Forster was uh, not Victorian. He was a little bit after. Does is Middle March? Is this the one that has uh, the scene where they're all where they're where they're skinny dipping? That's Room with a View. That's Room with a View. Yeah. Middle March. What do you think the name means? Um, well, I'm guessing it's like a plot of land. It's a town. It's a, a town, little town. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, really nothing. That's all no, you've got. No, Okay. North and South by Elizabeth Well, Pascal. yeah, I saw the miniseries for this one. Mm-hmm. And you really liked Thornton. Kind of. <gasps> you said you loved him, like, after we watched it. Well, there's things I like about him. What don't you like about him, then? I mean, he built that great stinking heap of a mill and it's got <laughs> people in there like child oh. labor and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I actually think that it's, uh, like it's a little bit lame to sort of like impose your like current era's morals on like right. the past. But at the same time, there's like a level where it's just kind of like, Ooh, you know, you know yeah. I don't know. But I, overall I think he's, he's but his okay. mills are better than the other mills Correct. in the area. Correct. So, yeah. Any anything else to say about North and South? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's. I think for me, North and South was more interesting in the chance to sort of see. Uh, it's is it Liverpool? Uh, Manchester. It's Manchester. Okay, so it's like. I mean, it's it's not actually it's not named. It's Manchester not like a real, it, but it's inspired but that's like by kind Manchester. of like so. So you're seeing like the industrial, like a like a really dirty industrial mm-hmm. town during the industrial revolution. Yes. And people are trying to like wrap their heads around things like the fact that like like how how to look at um, trying to be productive and make money, but there's right. also the idea of working conditions and right. pay. And there's strikes, and then there's right. strike breakers, and all of that is like really interesting. Yes. And then you've got this like romance thing going on, right? Which, it, you know, for me as a viewer, it, it's like less interesting than like the setting of the story or the big backdrop. It's the best part. So, um, okay. and you've said before that you per, you appreciate Gaskell's men more than you do Jane Austen's oh, men. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because they just. They, well, they do. They do things, mm-hmm. right? I, I mean, there's probably something I'm missing about this. You know, like mm-hmm. there's some perspective I don't have. But whenever I watch, where whenever I watch or read a Jane Austen story, mm-hmm. and and we're supposed to sort of like we're supposed to like the men in it, mm-hmm. and I never do. Well, it's, I, I mean, like aspects. I mean, they're right. friendly or they're sociable or something like that. But, but you those don't aren't, aspire to be like. That. I don't. I wouldn't never aspire to be like that. Whereas, yeah. um. Although Mr. Knightley is an exception. Yeah. Right. He's, he, like, takes he care does, of tenants. He does stuff. Yeah. You know, he, he's dynamic. He's interesting. He's making things happen. Yes. You know. Yeah, Jane Austen is very much, like, upper upper class. Yeah. Gentry kind of thing. Okay. David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Um, well. You remember me talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, a little mm-hmm. bit. Okay, so David, David Copperfield... Is he also, he's an orphan as well, right? Mm-hmm. He I, is. So many Dickens he characters about a lot are of orphans. orphans, right? Yes. And I don't remember much of it except that he works at an orphanage at some point, mm-hmm. I think. Or a, a school. He works at a school, mm-hmm. okay. 
And I, I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh wait, no, I'm no. sorry. I was getting it mixed up with Nicholas Nickleby. Oh, that's so he doesn't, he doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I don't know anything. About <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Then um, Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Brand. Do you remember me talking about this one? Because I was very like <gasps> swept away by it when I read it. Is this the one? This isn't the one. The I'm bored of this house. Bored of my life. Is it? No, that's Bleak House. Ah, uh, Bleak House. No, I don't know this one. Well, what do you think? You know one thing about Lady Audley, and what is that? She has a secret. She has a secret. So you don't even remember me talking about it? <clears throat> I recognize the name. Yeah. But I think I just got it mixed up with Bleak House. <laughs> Um, the air of Please Renfleet. Please tell me like Bleak House is in this list because I'm going to nail I, that I can't one. remember. <laughs> the air of Redcliffe by Charlotte Young. But I have told you about all of these, so you should know what is they're about. Is this the one that has that C.S. Lewis quote, or that C.S. Lewis like loved the? Air he of aspired to be like Guy Morville. That's what you know about this book. That's what I know about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, he did say he aspired to be like Guy. That's Morville. the only thing I know about the book. Okay. Um, Vanity Fair. By William Makepeace Thackeray. I remember you talking about this, and I think I even talked to you about it. And I don't remember. Can you give me you a hint? You started the miniseries. Yeah, you, you need to give me a little bit more than that. Becky Sharp. All right, okay. So Vanity Fair follows Becky Sharp, mm -hmm. who is... In a word, precocious. In another word, maybe manipulative. Yeah, I think precocious is a little too generous. She's portrayed as such in the miniseries, but manipulative as well. I mean, you she's didn't, got, get, she's you got, didn't got, get far enough. She's got viv, you know what I mean? She's got... Well, energy. yeah, but that's manipulative still. You can be, like, charming and manipulative. I think you could be precocious and manipulative. Yes, but I don't think she... I. You don't yeah. think she is? I think okay. she's just awful. Well, she is, and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. Is this the one where everyone is like into facts? It's got to be facts. No. No. That was hard times. Hard times. He got me all excited because he started at, during last October. I think I read. He started a couple <laughs> chapters of Hard Times, and I was like texting Tom from Tom Reed's things. Oh my goodness, he's picking up a Victorian novel. I'm not going to try to act too excited. <laughs> and then he just read a few chapters and was done. So you don't even remember me talking about the mayor of Casterbridge? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, and that's Is that it. it. That's it. Oh, all right. So thank you. How'd I do? For, uh, you know, I wasn't keeping score. Oh. So thank you for coming onto my channel. Um, I, I, I gotta say, you did not remember it about as many as I was hoping you would. Oh, really? I yeah. was, I was more ignorant. Or... Well, because I've talked about a lot of them to you. Well, yeah, that's the thing though. It's like. It's not your field. It just doesn't, st sometimes it doesn't stick. Like if, if you don't, you know. Right. If you don't know much about it. Yes. You know, and, and honestly, some of the names to me, they're just like name, like Lorna Doon, Nicholas Nickaby, David Copperfield. Nickel. Like I don't, yeah, I don't have any like associations with those names. So they're right. just names. You know, right. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't pull anything out of the memory archives, yeah. so to speak. Well, I'll make a top five list of Victorian novels for you to read now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching everyone. And I hope you're having a wonderful Victober. And I will be back for another video soon. Bye.